Hi everyone, it is August and that means it is Women in Translation Month, where many people, myself included, try and read more books by women in translation. Wherever possible, those should be books written by women and translated by women, though that isn't always possible. So I have picked, I think it's about 10 books off my shelves, my favourite books by women in translation to recommend to you today. And then I'm going to talk you through some of the books that I have on my TBR. I have a hefty TBR workload this month so I'm not going to get to all of these but I have purchased some shorter books in the hope I can get through those. Some of these have been on my TBR for ages, some of them are relatively new. On the whole this is just to refresh my memory, remind myself of the things I could pick up this month and also in case you see anything that you would like to pick up this month hopefully this can serve as some kind of inspiration. So firstly let's go through the books that I have um, already read and loved and can talk about. I have talked about all of these books before on my channel so I'm just going to go through them really quite quickly. The first one is The Faster I Walk, The Smaller I Am by Kirsty A. Skomswold, which is translated from the Norwegian by Kerry A. Pierce. This is a novel about a woman who was worried that she no longer has an identity. She's worried that someone else with her name has taken her identity, not because she's witnessed someone doing that, but just because she's worried she has no significance in the world anymore. So she goes out on her own walking, hoping people will talk to her. It's both very sad and also also very funny as well. My next recommendation is Lullaby by Leila Slamani. This is translated from the French by Sam Taylor. This is about a nanny who we find out at the very beginning of the book has murdered the two children that she is looking after. And this book is really a character study of her and the events that happened before the brutal murders that we found out about at the beginning. Next is a book translated from Finnish. This is Children of the Cave by Vervel Samuel Kulpi, which is translated by Emily and Fleur Jeremiah. This is set in 1819. It's a novel, it's not one of my favourite books, but I could see other people really loving it. I know you could say that for any text, but I wanted something very specific in this book, which I don't think other people would be particularly longing for. So this is about an assistant to a French explorer who's gone to Russia, where there's rumours of this collective, um, these children who live in a cave, who may be part animal, part human. And it's a discussion of faith and religion and evolution. And I wanted more from the children's point of view, but if you're just interested in people's attitudes at that time towards emerging theories of evolution, then this might be one that you want to check out. This is a book with two novellas inside it. This is So Much For That Winter by Dorte Noors, which has been translated from the Danish by Misha Hawkstra. This is um, a very experimental book, which I've mentioned before. The first novella in here is called Minna Wants Rehearsal Space, and it's set out like a series of Facebook status updates, like Minna is doing this, Minna is doing that, and at first that feels really jarring to read, but then you get into the flow of it, and it's a, a, an exploration of performative self. Um, she wants space to rehearse who she is and relearn herself after a breakup and she would like to be left alone. <laughs> so there is that one. I could recommend several of Banana Yoshimoto's work but I always come back to this one which I don't see people recommending as much. This is NP and it's translated from the Japanese by Anne Sheriff. This is about translation. It is about a novel where if someone tries to translate it, they die. I just really love that premise and I, and I love this book. I also love this short story collection by Yoko Ogawa. I know so many people love her novels and I do too. I enjoyed The Housekeeper and The Professor, but my favorite writing of hers is her short stories. This is translated from the Japanese by Stephen Snyder, I think. Think. Yes, by Stephen Snyder. This is a collection of creepy stories um, where hands grow in the ground and people carry organs around in their purse. So if you enjoy the kind of short stories that I write and the kind of short stories that I love in general, then you'll definitely love this collection. Next is a novel translated from French. This is The Heart or Men the Living by Melita Karangal, translated into English by Sam Taylor. This is the story of a heart. It's about a boy who goes surfing and then is in a car accident. He's not going to survive and the doctors are talking to his parents about how they would like to harvest his organs, they would like to take his heart and they have someone waiting to take it. So it's about these two people and the journey this, this heart goes on. The sentences are quite long and punctuated by commas, so the whole thing feels like a heartbeat. It's really beautiful. Next is a 
favorite of many people. This is Sayaka Murata's Convenience Store Woman. This is translated from the Japanese by Ginny Tapley Takamori. And her new book, Earthlings, is coming out in the fall, which the fall, I don't say that in English, in autumn in autumn. Her new book is coming out in autumn, which is also brilliant, but you can't get your hands on it yet. This is about a woman called Kiko who doesn't feel as though she knows how to communicate with people. And she's worked in a convenience store all her life, which she really values because she has a handbook which tells her what to say to people and how to speak to people. And she loves that routine, but everyone around her judges her for only staying in this job and it's a it's a wonderful exploration of humanity from someone who sees life very very differently. I have two books by Hong Kong here the first one is The White Book which I read really recently um, and if you would like something that's more experimental than her other novels I recommend this it's a look at the color white and grief she is creating a life for her sister who was born prematurely and didn't survive so she's imagining what her life could be like but it's very fragmented and it does feel like poetry but my favorite book by her is The Vegetarian I should say both of these are translated by Deborah Smith this is a novel that's split into three parts but the subject of this novel never gets a voice it's three different people looking at her as she decides to reject meat, to feel at one with the world and wants to plant herself in the ground like a tree. It's very surreal, but it's also looking at um, ownership of female body as well and loss of voice, which I loved. I recently read Territory of Light by Yuka Toshima, which is translated from the Japanese by Geraldine Harcourt. I filmed a vlog where I was reading 10 books in a weekend. This is one of them. I'll link that down below. This is about a woman who has recently broken up from her husband and she's trying to find her footing and um, try and work out what is important to her and also how she should behave because she's doing lots of questionable things um relearning how to connect with her daughter and care for her because she isn't being a very good parent right now and neither is her daughter's father either this is a very measured paced book and i loved it and i have another of her books on my tbr for this month too. So those are the books that I would recommend that I have loved the most out of the translated work by women that I have read and then these are the ones that are on my TBR. So first we have People from My Neighbourhood by Hiromi Kawakami which is translated from the Japanese by Ted Goosen. I know her work is so beloved and I've never actually read any of her novels. She's the author of Strange Weather in Tokyo. This is a series of flash fiction. It's called Palm of the Hand Stories. So in Japan flash fiction is called that is if you could hold a story in the palm of your hand and this is looking at all of the strange characters that live in one neighbourhood. Then I have a Yoko Ogawa novel which is translated, I'm assuming, by Stephen Snyder. Yes, Stephen Snyder. So this is opposite in theme almost to her novel The Housekeeper and the Professor which is about a man who has a very short memory and a woman who comes to his house every day has to reintroduce herself. I would recommend that one too. Um, so this is about an island where things are forgotten from a collective conscience and it is about the police who track down people who remember things or encourage people to remember things so it's very dystopian. I'm not sure if I'll be reading this in August but I'll definitely be getting to it in September because it's one of our picks for our Patreon book club which if you'd like to join I will link down below. I will speak about this book just on my channel as well but for the Patreon book club I do dedicated videos. Next I have a non-fiction book by Slavana Aleksevich and this is Chernobyl Prayer which I've heard so many amazing things about. This is translated from Russian by Anna Gunnan and Arch Tate. This is first-hand accounts of Chernobyl um, and it's like an oral history of it and I bought this for um, research and as I said everyone says how brilliant it is. I also have The Asawa Murders by Rico Onda and this is translated from the Japanese by Alison Watts. This is set in the 70s and it's about um, a villa where 17 people die in one night and then it's following the subsequent decades trying to work out who killed these 17 people. The only person of this family who owned the villa who wasn't killed was their daughter who is called Hisako and she is blind. I don't know what the representation is in this is in this. I don't know what the representation in this book is like. I hope it is good. I hope this book in general is good. Um, I don't tend to read like crime thrillers that are translated so I'm keen to read that one. I then have this novel which has sadly been on my 
TBR for quite a long time. This is Brother in Ice by Alicia Kopf, and this is translated from the Spanish by Mara Faye Lethem. It describes itself as a hybrid novel. It says it's part research notes, part fictionalized diary, and part travel log, using the stories of polar exploration to make sense of the protagonist's own concerns as she comes of age as an artist, a daughter, and a sister to an autistic brother. I have a Norwegian short story collection on my TBR which was a recommendation from Matthew Sharapa. I should say that there's a Women in Translation Month readathon at the end of the month if that's of interest to you which is run by Kendra, Matthew and Jennifer. I'll link their announcement videos down below. This was a recommendation from Matthew. It's called Knots by Gunhild Oyhag and it's translated from the Norwegian by Carrie Dixon. These stories vary from stories about love and desire and passion to the mysterious disappearance of an entire family. It says these stories do the chilling work of tracing the outlines of what could have been in both the quietly morbid and the delightfully comical. I have a couple of books here published by Tilted Axis Press who were founded by Deborah Smith who translates all of Hong Kong's work. I have two short story collections. This is Where the Wild Ladies Are by Matsuda Oko, translated from the Japanese by Polly Barton. This is a collection of feminist retelling Japanese ghost tales, which I think sounds brilliant. And the other short story collection I have published by them is Arid Dreams by Dunwad Pimwana, which is translated from the Thai by Mweep Popsicle. This is a collection of 13 stories that investigates ordinary and working class Thailand, characters aspiring for more, but remaining suspended in routine. And the novel that I have published by them is this, which is gorgeous. This is I'll Go On by Hwan Young Un, and it's translated from the Korean by Emily Ye Won. This is about about two sisters the blurbs inside. It says, Sora finds herself dreaming of the past when she discovers that Nana, the younger sister she's cared for ever since their father died in a freak accident and their mother became numb with grief, is pregnant. Her initial reaction is shock because they still live together and she doesn't know how that happened. I just realized that there is a book in this pile that should have been mentioned earlier because I've already read it. So let's just pretend I included it earlier. This is an add-on book because it is half by men and half by women. This is Poems on Extinction, edited by Chris McCabe. I'm mentioning it because I think the subject is fascinating. So this is about languages on the brink of extinction and it's highlighting those languages by including poems from those languages in their original language and then also translated into English. And as I said, it's half by men, half by women. If you're looking for poetry in translation, um, I have some on my TBR as well, but this book I really, really enjoyed. Let's go into the other poetry that I have on my TBR. So I have these four pamphlets published by Tilted Axis Press, which were a series that they did called Translating Feminisms, and I'm pretty sure they were on my TBR for last Women in Translation Month, so I really must read them this year. So the first one, we have Desires Become Demons. This is edited and translated from Tamil by Mina Kandasamy. I also have this one, which is called Night by Sulachana Mandaha, and this is translated from the Nepali by Muna Garung. There's a collection of Korean poetry called Against Healing, which is edited and translated from Korean by Emily Young Min Yoon. And the fourth one is called Moon Fevers by Noir Twin, and this is translated from the Vietnamese by Caitlin Rees. Plain. I've also bought let me just whiz through these because otherwise we're going to be here a long time. Um, I have bought some more pamphlets by Strangers Press. So when I did the reading 10 books in a weekend vlog, I included one of their pamphlets, which I bought a while ago in foils. And it was really fun to read. And I discovered that they have quite a few more. Some translated from Japanese and some translated a whole series of translations from Korean. So I have picked up all of the pamphlets that have been written by women. The covers are all stunning. This is called Mika Marie by Masumi Kobo and it's translated from the Japanese by Polly Barton. This is about a schoolboy who meets a married woman 10 years his senior at a comic convention and they start a relationship. This one is called Europa by Hong Kong, which is translated from the Korean by Deborah Smith. I don't actually know anything about this. I just saw it was by Hong Kong and I thought, yes, please. And thank you very much. Um, 
It's about someone who's been having nightmares. Nightmares of fish bones, fractals, and a marriage that ended after some unnamed violence. Next we have Divorce by Kim Soom. This is translated from Korean by Emily Ye Won. This is about a poet who is reflecting on the lives of different generations of women around her as she contemplates her own divorce. This one doesn't have a blurb, so I don't actually know what it's about, but I will read it this month. It's very short. I think this is my favorite cover out of all of them. This is Friendships with Grown Ups by Naokola Yamazaki, translated from the Japanese by Polly Barton. I realized that I bought this, but this isn't actually translated. This is by Yoko Yoshida. It's called Spring Sleepers, and it's about a man who hasn't slept for two months, but she writes in both Japanese and English. So I will save that for another time. Two other books that I bought from their Korean series. This is Left's Right, Right's Left by Han Yuju, translated by Janet Hong. This takes place in about the space of a minute, and I think it's in about an abusive relationship. She is on a stairwell, her partner has grabbed her hair, and she's thinking back on all of their relationship. And the final one that I have in the series is by Shiran Harang, and it's translated by Emily Ye Won. It's called Five Preludes and a Fugue, and this is about a woman who's investigating her mother's death. And the final four books I have on my TBR is Child of Fortune by Yuka Tashima. As I said, I loved her book Territory of Light. This is translated from the Japanese by Geraldine Harcourt. It has similar themes to the other book and that is about single motherhood. Every time I look at this book on my shelf, I'm excited because I've heard amazing things about it. I'm not gonna get to it in August because it is huge, but this is out by Nasua Karina, which is translated from the Japanese by Steven Snyder. It's about a group of four women who work in a factory and one of them snaps one one day and kills her husband and she tells the women that she works with and then they help her cover up this crime. I just think that that sounds really, um, is fun the right word? It sounds fun. The final two books, we have Karate Chop by Dalton Oz, which I assume is translated from the Danish by Misha Hawkstra because she translates her other work. I lie, it is translated by Martin Aitken. I'm sorry, Martin. This is a very short collection of stories, which includes a story about a man who Googles female serial killers while his girlfriend sleeps, and another about a daughter who watches silently as her mother succumbs to madness. The final book is one translated from Dutch, which is The Discomfort of Evening by Marika Lucas Regnefeld, and this was shortlisted for the Man Booker International Prize, or is currently shortlisted for the Man Booker International Prize, which I think is being announced, the winner is being announced this month. It's translated by Michelle Hutchinson. It's about a young girl called Jazz who lives on a farm, sees the world in a very strange way. And from people who've read it, they've said it's very twisted and heavy and um, uncomfortable. Um, and those tick all of my boxes. So there we go. Those are the books that I would recommend and the books that I have bought or have been sitting on my TBR for quite a long time. I will list them in the description box if you would like to go um, and check out any titles you might have missed. Let me know what you're planning to read this month because I would love to know. I hope you're all doing okay and I will speak to you very soon. Lots of love. Bye.